When you picture yourself free of that suit, what do you see? Hmm, I'm playful. A goof. A goose. A silly goose? Yes, but also unbound by rules and conventions. Rebellious. A bad boy. But still light. Still playful. A bad goose. And now, the moment of truth. And how do you feel? Lighter than air. Roger, how can I ever thank you? I told you I ask for nothing in return. Now go, you're late for your next barbecue as it is. But there must be something. Tell you what, if you have a good time today, maybe swing by for a celebratory sherry. How about that? Now run along, my goose. <laughs> yeah, I'm just kind of doing the couch potato thing tonight. Watching Hostel 2 with Martha. Dad, how was the barbecue? It was absolutely divine. Oh, Steve, you should have seen me. I was so easy and fun and free. Yo, Stan, where you want this puppy? Me and the guys had such a good time, we decided to keep it going with a little after barbecue. To the backyard, boys. Stan, 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 Stan. Well, Roger will be pleased. <laughs> nice work. Wait. There was something special I was going to do if I had a good time today. A celebratory cannonball! Yeah, 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 ah! Rogo, I'm the only thing not burning. Smith, what's the meaning of this? This is a non-non-work setting. Shall we brush up on the agency dress code? How about we don't and say we did? What a cool thing to say. But what if it came from the twisted mind of the Tickle Monster? <laughs> Smith, I'm loving the new you. Truly, amber is the color of your energy. <laughs> Instant promotion! Ah, <laughs> uh, what's this now? E equals MC squared and Gettysburg address in 7076. Sounds like a bunch of bullshit to me. Dad? Wouldn't you rather be playing this PlayStation 5? Hot Piggly Hog! <laughs> Where's my boop? Oh, you get your boop, my lady. Roger? Is that you, my goose? What's wrong? I'm in the doldrums, Stan. Deep doldrums, the double Ds. Every time I achieve a great creative peak, it's followed by a depressive rut. And you, in my time of greatest emotional need, abandon me to run off with your new friends, Jackson and Duper and Francine. <sighs> this is why I knew I shouldn't have done this. You always get so possessive and clingy. I'll cling to you <clears throat> for that remark. <clears throat> I do you an unsolicited favor, asking for nothing in return, and this is how you return the favor. You are a bad friend. If it helps, it's your clothes that have given me this new lease on life. My relationships have improved, I'm pooping people like crazy, and my knees have never looked better. Well, I don't know if I can keep making them for you, being treated like this. And you're notoriously hard on your clothes, Stan. Look, they're already starting to fray. Well, Stan, how does your new suit look? It's a clothes version of the Holocaust. You don't like it, I can tell. Okay, Stan, confession time. I never knew how to make clothes. Everything I gave you was Amazon basics. And the bad goose designs? eBay ordered iron-ons. But do you realize what this means? You didn't get your easy confidence from my clothes. It was inside you all along. That's right, Stan, this is a mother Dumbo type deal. <sighs> okay, whatever, Roger. I'm late for work. Sorry, here, one of your old suits. So you never even knew how to make clothes. Wrong, Klaus. I lied to Stan. I do know how to make clothes. But I wanted him to feel easy and free in anything he wears. So, who's the bad friend now? Uh, I don't know. You, probably. Uh, see you later, Roger. I lied to Klaus, Martha. As you well know, I do not know how to make clothes. 